If you know aviation history, you know that B-25s took off from an aircraft carrier. Did you know that a P-51 landed on an aircraft carrier? We're going to tell you that story. Hello, everyone. Welcome to Celebrating Aviation with Mike Machat. Today, we're going to look at the carrier qualifying of the North American P-51. And the pilot who flew those tests was Captain Bob Elder. And we're going to look at his amazing career in naval aviation as well. On the morning of 18 April 1942, the Doolittle Raid was launched with a series of B-25s taking off from the carrier USS Hornet in the Pacific to launch the first attack against the Japanese homeland in World War II. Flying cover that morning in a Douglas SBD Dauntless was Lieutenant Bob Elder at the beginning of his naval aviation career. We're going to look at a number of paintings by a very dear friend of mine, Craig Cadera. Craig is a former airline pilot, U.S. Air Force pilot, and a world-class aviation artist published by the Greenwich Workshop. If you'd like to contact Craig for possible commissions, uh, please see the link in the comments section below. But here we see Craig's rendition of the ruptured duck, another B-25 in the Doolittle Raid, uh, leaving the deck of the Hornet, uh, the famous Disney logo on the nose, and the aircraft commander was First Lieutenant Ted Lawson. At the end of World War II, in the summer of 1945, the Navy actually evaluated a series of Army Air Force's aircraft, and Bob Elder was responsible for a lot of those tests. He flew the P-38 Lightning, the P-47 Thunderbolt, even the P-61 P Black Widow, and the A-20 Havoc. But the three finalists uh, selected for carrier tests were the North American B-25, Navy designation PBJ, the P-51 Mustang renamed Seahorse for this test, and the land-based Grumman F-7F Tiger Cat. On 15 November 1945, these three aircraft launched from Naval Air Station Norfolk, flew out uh, an hour and 45 minutes to rendezvous with the carrier. And here we see Bob Elder bringing the Seahorse aboard uh, for the first time that an Army Air Forces aircraft was ever landed on a Navy aircraft carrier. He flew a series of tests that day. Here we see the famous Navy photographs. And as I said, all three aircraft were uh, brought aboard and evaluated. And it was determined that uh, none were really suitable for what they called routine uh, aircraft carrier operations, but it was a worthwhile test. And uh, there was a lot of data and information that was gained from that. But then came the Korean War and uh, Bob Elder was uh, assigned to combat flying the Grumman Panther and the uh, McDonald Banshee. After Korea, he uh, graduated the Navy Test Pilot School and was assigned to flight test work at uh, Pax River. And he flew and evaluated the uh, first generation of Navy jets. Here we see the North American Fury, uh, straight wing and swept wing versions. And it was a new generation of uh, Navy operations on carriers. Uh, they were bringing larger, faster aircraft aboard and Navy test pilots were responsible for uh, determining the operating envelopes and the uh, safety uh, operations uh, as best possible at this, at this time. Uh, Bob Alder was uh, assigned for fighter operations and it was, a, it was dangerous work. I mean, they lost a lot of airplanes uh, uh, trying to bring these fast jets aboard these smaller ships. And it was a challenging time in naval aviation history. Bob Elder flew such aircraft as the Grumman Panther. Uh, as the supersonic age arrived, the uh, Vought F-8 Crusader, the J-79 powered Super Tiger F-11 F-1F from Grumman, and a host of uh, Douglas aircraft, the Sky Raider, the F-3D Sky Knight, A-4D Sky Hawk, F-4D Sky Ray, Douglas's first supersonic airplane, and the A-3D, the beloved Whale, the largest aircraft to operate from a carrier. But then came another generation. In the late 50s, the first Mach 2 Navy jet, uh, the McDonnell F-4H-1, which became the F-4 Phantom, twin-engine, two-seat, multi-role fighter. 
This aircraft was pitted against Vought's XF-8U-3 or Crusader-3 uh, at Edwards Air Force Base for a fly-off competition to determine which aircraft would win a long-term production contract. And in this painting, you see the uh, airplane over Edwards Air Force Base under evaluation. Uh, in particular, this is a zoom climb flown by uh, Bob Elder uh, wearing a full pressure suit. He took the airplane to 87,300 feet. This painting was commissioned by another dear friend, Casey Law. Casey introduced me to uh, Bob Elder in the late 1980s. And uh, it was an amazing experience for the three of us to go to lunch and listen to uh, Elder's stories about uh, flying combat and flying all these amazing aircraft. But he always considered the Super Crusader as, uh, quote, the most exciting aircraft he ever flew, unquote. Uh, this aircraft was capable of uh, Mach 2.39 making it the fastest single engine Navy jet. However, uh, the Phantom was a two seat, two twin engine airplane uh, that just had more capability for different uh, missions. And so the uh, F-4 won the competition and of course 5,000 plus were built for the Navy in a number of foreign countries. Ending his proud career in the Navy, uh, Captain Elder took command of the USS Coral Sea and retired from the Navy in 1964. But he still yearned to fly and uh, through some connections, he wound up being hired as the chief test pilot for the Northrop Aircraft Corporation in Los Angeles. In that role, he was responsible for the development of the T-38 Talon, the F-5, the F-5 E and F Tiger II, the Scotia Tiger program, and the uh, transition from Northrop's YF-17 prototype to the F-18 Hornet. And finally, the F-20 Tiger Shark, quite an array of aircraft for a naval aviator. So let's look at his career. From 1940 to 1964, began in the Pacific flying cover for the Doolittle Raid, uh, flew combat in the Battle of Coral Sea, Battle of Midway, the Solomon Islands, Guadalcanal, flew combat in the Korean War. He won two Navy crosses, the Distinguished Flying Cross, two presidential unit citations, and logged a total of 8,000 flying hours in 140 different types of aircraft. Captain Elder made nearly 1,000 arrested landings on 25 different carriers and was the chief test pilot for Northrop from 1964 to 1987. Quite a career when you consider uh, training in radial engine biplanes and flying your first combat in an airplane like the SBD Dauntless and winding up your career in a Mach 2 F-18 Hornet. We hope you've enjoyed this presentation and thank you very much for celebrating aviation with Mike Mashad. As always, special thanks to my friends Casey Law and Craig Kadera. Until next time, take care. <laughs>